friends, Merry Christmas, and welcome to another video from my studio. Uh, yeah, I hope you're having a great time with family, friends, loved ones, and that, of course, you have some time to make some music. Uh, this is actually the second part of a video um, which started out where I was showing you how I record my synths. If you're new to this channel, uh, that is the synths that I record. And uh, what I showed you in that first video is how I use this outboard gear um, to make sure that the sounds that I get um, have a, a certain character, a certain vibe, groove coming into the box so I don't have to spend so much time working on them afterwards. Uh, so I'll link that video uh, now somewhere on your screen uh, so you can jump back and have a look at that also if you like. Um, and what I thought would be interesting to do for this video is actually to recreate that sound, that chain, in plugins, in software. Uh, so let's see how close I got. Let me show you uh, what uh, the sound is that I recorded with this chain in um, hardware. Uh, so that is what we're going to listen to now. Bottom one is software. Let me solo these for you. Now we're hearing the outboard recording. And that's the plugins. Let me show you what that recording actually sounds like. So I think that shows you hopefully that you can get really close um, with the plugins. So um, what have I chosen to replicate? Well, basically everything that you see here, I've actually find, uh, managed to find uh, really interesting plugins that allow me to do that. Um, so let me just dig out very quickly um, what I have in uh, hardware and let me show you what I've um, used to clone that in software. So the first thing that my synths hit is uh, this thing right here, which is uh, called a line driver, uh, or yeah, it's, a, it's something from do-it-yourself re. Uh, it's uh, called a, um, a color palette. Uh, you can uh, buy it uh, assembled or as a kit. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's very affordable, especially if you know how to solder a little bit. I was lucky I got mine fully assembled used and it was a pretty good price. I had a few cards on it already also. And those white spaces that you see is basically the cards you can choose to put in there. Um, and what I have uh, and what I use actually the most is this Royal Blue, which is a kind of a Neve style sounding transformer and a little bit of, you know, a little bit of electronics going on in there. It actually has an EQ, like a shelving boost of yeah, 5 dB at 4.7. I took that out. Like that was way too much to be able to just use it on sounds all over the place. And maybe this was very cool to have when you used to record everything to tape. Uh, but yeah, it was way too much. So, you know, you can just move that jumper and then it's gone. Um, the other thing that I've heard great things about here is uh, this, which is an API style sounding kind of vibe. Um, and if I were to start today with this, um, how to call it, um, way of recording, I think the ones I would get is, yeah, this um, uh, Royal Blue, which is the Neve. Uh, then the mass driver, which is the API. And then there is also one called Hitmaker, which is uh, sort of an SSL. All this stuff is made by Louder Than Liftoff. Those are the three that I would get. Um, I, I have some other ones now, but those are definitely the ones. And uh, I've read a lot of really great things about them. So, you know, if you were going for a mono channel with all that stuff in hardware, that would be about, I guess, 500 bucks or so, which, yes, is, is, uh, it's definitely not cheap. Um, so, what we're going to be using in software to do that is this Omega N plugin from CushUBK, which models the transformer vibe of a Neve desk. Um, and I'm going to demo it for you in just a second so you get a feeling for how that sounds. The second part of my chain that things hit is this, um, again, louder than liftoff chop shop EQ. 
Um, and uh, I have the black version, there's a, a white version also. And the cool thing I found out is that uh, there is a one-to-one -one, uh, yeah, plug-in port from Plugin Alliance. It's actually on sale now for 15 bucks, so that's a great deal. I think I will get it. Um, it's nice to have it in software also. And, and this low rider stuff here can do really interesting stuff in the hardware. You have to go inside and change um, a setting like a what do you call it a, not a dip switch but you have to go in there here you can just click a button so I'm, I'm looking forward to going a little bit more in depth into that one and then the third part of my recording chain is the tweaker compressor from uh, Kush UBK if you haven't heard of Kush UBK uh, and the stuff that they do. It's a very innovative company doing really, really cool stuff. Um, please support them and, uh, you know, uh, get the get their plugins, get their hardware. They have a great subscription offering, you know, like, yeah, uh, all their plugins for like 10 bucks a month. It's such a great investment. Um, and they're a very cool company doing really innovative stuff. So, um, yeah, please uh, support uh, the great people from uh, Kush UBK and Greg and his team. So what we're going to be using to um, recreate the sound of the tweaker is uh, this compressor called Novatron, which besides being a really interesting compressor with kind of different response curves, also has saturation built into it. Uh, but then I saw that there is actually a saturator that models the tweaker distortion, which is quite special. So we've slapped that on there also, and this one's pretty affordable. Um, uh, so we're going to be using that. The line driver actually is also very affordable. Do I have it up here? Yes, up here it's 29 bucks. The Novatron compressor is a little bit more pricey, but as I said, there's also a subscription for this. And then the fourth and final part of my signal chain is yeah, this uh, EQ PKT, which is a Clark Technic clone of a Pultec EQ, which, um, yeah, it, it sounds really nice. It's quite affordable. I think it's great to have an EQ after your compressor so you can still finer, sort of finer tweak the way the sound is coming in because sometimes you can get really cool groove response happening in the compressor. Um, but it maybe still has too much high or low frequencies or too little, so you can just fix that with a broad sweep kind of EQ like this. Um, and we're going to be replacing that in software with this freeware from Ignite Amps, which is a, a, a Pultec uh, plugin available both for Mac and PC. So let's have a listen to what this all sounds like um, in uh, the real world. And let me record with you um, that little Moog synth. Uh, it's a subharmonic, and again, that's uh, out there giving us these sounds. Um, and let me record with you what it sounds like going through the output gear. Okay, yes, I see we have level here, so that's good. So right now we are tracking it. As you can maybe see here, let me come in a little bit closer. Through the line driver up here. And the louder the lift off chop shop. Put on the line driver again, and the chop shop. That's kind of the vibe that I want for that. And um, yeah, the second part that it's going to is the tweaker. That's no compression, it's a little bit of compression. And then the final bit is that EQ, which is adding a little bit of weight and taking a little bit of highs off. So that's the chain. Let's record. And what I'm going to be doing now, uh, while this is recording, let me take you with me over to my patch bay. Over here. We're going to be basically just grabbing the output from that synth and we're going to be jacking it into the input 1, 2 of my sound card. should make a noise now. Let's see, what have I done wrong? Uh, I should be switching on the channel, that would help. Okay, so right now we have uh, these two recordings. Uh, one is with outboard and the other is um, just straight to the sound card. 
The top one is the output, the bottom is the sound card, and that has the plugins on it. I'm going to remove the plugins and let's have a quick listen to what the outboard sounds like. Chick, chick, chick. And let me take you over to this screen so you can see better. All right. Let's hear it in context first. Now let's listen to the plugin version, and that has no processing yet. It seems I messed up a little bit when I copied this over. Let me fix that quickly because it's definitely not on the grid. Uh, something like that, bro. Come on. About there. Yeah. Okay. That was a little bit too fast for my own good there. Okay. Okay. So this is the plugin version. Let me engage the plugins now. That's where we want to get to. So let me put that in solo. That's the plugin version. That's the output version. That is really close, I think. So yeah, what have we done with these plugins? Let me show you um, and open everything up and let me reset everything so that we can start from scratch. Uh, we don't need this right now, and this, and this, and also this. Okay, so right now we have that um, sound just with the way we recorded it. Let's add the Model N um, Neve style line driver vibe. a really nice sort of uh, weight to it and although this may be subtle I think you'll find when you keep adding things like this to a sound uh, the end result really sounds very vibey very different than you would expect um, if you uh, only use maybe one big EQ one big compressor and just slam it with that I haven't had that much luck with that kind of an approach the second part that this hits is the louder than liftoff uh, chop shop. So let me bring that in and show you what that does to this sound. I used it to cut the highs. And I realized on the plugin you have to have this res thing engaged for it to sound like the hardware. Like this also changes the response, etc. But this is the way. So this engaged and the res engaged is what got me closest to the hardware. Uh, the second part is this low cut. Let me sweep it up for you. You can just remove kind of all the mud, all the stuff that you don't need on your uh, signal. And we can see this really nicely in the spectrum analyzer uh, right over here. So see, look on the spectrum analyzer on the low end, which yeah, for those of you that haven't worked with spectrum analyzer before, it's basically all the stuff sort of starting here going down. Um, look what happens when I sweep down this filter with the low end stuff there. See how the energy there just went way up? All that stuff is going to interfere with your kick and bass, which live down there. Let me show you. You see? So the kick and bass are basically just down there. And what we want to do is give that maximum space to breathe, which is why this sound is being uh, low cut with this uh, EQ. And then the final thing that I did to it is um, put a tilting EQ on it uh, and that just changes the character a little bit of the sound. You can either move it towards the low end or towards the high end without really messing up the mids. So that is what I used the chop shop for on that sound. And then the next step was the compressor. And this was really to, to sort of change the groove and the vibe of it a little bit. So let me bring it in uh, with the rest of the track. just want it to be breathing sort of a little bit in, in the music. That sounds nice. Let's add a little bit of in and output saturation. Now it sits nicely. Let's do a bypass. 
I just find that that has more swing and character. Then the next step is the distortion from the tweaker. And this plugin sounds so cool. It's just one button, one knob, but it sounds so good what it does. What's without it? And then I did a little boost on the low end with a little bit of the Poltec trick also, cutting it a bit and then attenuated the highs. get it to sit in the track a little bit better. We go back to the outboard recording. It's a little bit duller. Let's take the chop shop down a bit more. Listen to the outboard. Plugins. Plugins, outboard. So I think, you know, really the, the general character has absolutely made it over. And um, yeah, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a really nice way to recreate the vibe and mojo that you can get with outboard gear. And what I actually have come to realize, what I really like about this recording chain, because obviously there's a million ways to do this, right? And, and no one way is, is better or correcter than the other. but what I've come to realize is that using this approach, I'm able to dial in sounds really quickly with a good vibe and a groove and get them either more back or more forward in the mix, have a bit more low end, a bit more highs, you know, bring the mids out by cutting the lows and the highs, compress them in such a way that they either slot into the groove differently or are more present or pulling or pushing. And then, you know, the final um, pull tech EQ just to make sure that the overall vibe fits nicely into into the frequency spectrum so i think this is a very powerful chain to maybe experiment with all these things have demos on them and yeah the pull tech is even it's even fully for free uh kush ubk has a 10 day 14 day demo i think as does plugin alliance um but yeah like you know support your local plugin and hardware makers and um you know Plugin Alliance does amazing stuff. Uh, Kush UBK does truly innovative and amazing stuff. Like both their hardware and software is just, it's, it's on a different level. I'm not saying, you know, that Plugin Alliance or anyone else is not doing great stuff, but something like the tweaker, compressor, you know, I, I haven't seen anything like that out there in the wild. <laughs> compressor that can do so many things. Like, I actually remember now, uh, I, I wanted to show you this. I don't know if this is going to be maybe uh, too much, but just very quickly, in case I, I, I did remember there was one person who was interested in uh, the, the the tweaker, and uh, and he mentioned like, oh yeah, I've been I've been kind of. Let me show you what was the bit that kind of made me go like, you're kidding me. Um, these are so-called analog presets that you can set these things to and they will emulate the vibe of all these bits of output gear. So this is obviously an API 2500, 1176, Dynamite Compressor, LA-2A, different settings, another 1176. Uh, this thing sounds uncannily like tape. I'm sure I'm going to do a... Um, uh, a special just on the tweakers because they're so amazing and like who makes that you know who makes a hardware box that can imitate like five six seven different uh, compressors give me a break you know it's the yeah only only Gregory and his team the people from uh, Kush UBK could come up with crazy stuff like that so support your local you know plug-in makers and uh, and amazing companies out there doing this stuff um, it's really worth having a few choice bits of gear and I hope that this video has given you some ideas of yeah, what, what you can use to make your tracking and your production process more efficient um, and uh, how you can get better sounds uh, very quickly going into the box. I think the only realization that I had sort of while I was making this is that I don't know how quickly I would get to these sounds using the plugins. Like, obviously, if it's an outboard gear, it's so fast, like, you just grab a few buttons and, and you know, you, you get very quickly, intuitively to something. So I, I would suggest to map these plugins, the main functions, to some controller. So you can do something very similar that I do with the outboard with plugins. 
And as you see, you only need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like 14 buttons would cover most of it. Uh, knobs, I mean. So, yeah, try to get yourself like a little a little controller that has lots of rotary encoders. Like, for example, I use this thing here called the uh, uh, where are we here? Midibix, which you know it's it's pretty affordable. It has loads of rotary encoders, and for that kind of a job, it's it's really good because you just you know you just map it and you know that it's fixed to that, and that's it. That's all it does. What more could you want, right? Uh, having that much control over a sound just from one place, any channel that you click. So, yes, I hope that this has been fun uh, and interesting for you and that, um, yeah, it gives you some ideas of how it's possible to recreate uh, outboard gear in software and uh, essentially how to reach better results fast, which is what I um, yeah, do over at RapidFlow. Uh, if you're interested in that, I have uh, templates and uh, sample packs over on my web store, which is called rapidflow.shop. There's a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel that will show you um, how I work there and in essence how I'm able to leverage these kinds of workflows to make a track uh, in about an hour. Um, and have it uh, in a playable state using controllers on stage. So uh, I hope that um, some of this is useful to you and uh, I hope you have a fantastic uh, Christmas and uh, end of year and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care, bye bye.